Hello everybody and welcome to this week's video. This week I wanted to do this carrot time lapse tutorial for you all. I used the Fabriano 100% cotton paper and 140 pound and I used the M. Graham watercolors. I used maroon perylene, azo orange, azo yellow, sap green, permanent green light, burnt sienna, sepia, and Payne's gray. Now please forgive the kind of sorted nature of this video. Uh, I did have to do it over the course of a few days as I was getting a new desk in and I ended up getting the wrong top. So you will see a little bit of different clips in here, but overall I hope you can still follow this tutorial and still enjoy it, or at the very least enjoy the time-lapse painting that I have today. I started off by painting the carrot with the azo yellow. You're not going to see a lot of this by the time the painting is actually done, but I really wanted it to have this nice glow to it, and you do end up seeing it a little bit in the highlights of the carrot once it is all done. I'm doing this as a relatively light wash, so you'll see that it ends up being a really kind of pale yellow color. Now once that dries, I start going in with my azo orange, and I'm just adding that along the outsides of the, the carrots, or at the edges of it where you would have the most shadow, and I'm just kind of blending that in. As you can see, most of the yellow I end up covering, especially on the three kind of outer carrots, because those are the ones that are going to be the darkest and most in shadow, so most of that yellow, most of that light color is going to be covered up, but you will end up seeing uh, some of it in the final piece, and you will be able to kind of tell that you have that that yellow kind of glowing beneath it, which is really my favorite part of glazing. As you can see, I'm not spending really any time kind of differentiating those segments. I'm really treating it as a kind of a bumpy line and then blending in, not paying a ton of attention to those little tiny segments and ridges and the texture of the carrot. Now I'm just kind of going through and I'm doing that with all of the carrots. Some of it is going to just be the azo orange. Some of it is going to be the azo orange with the maroon perylene kind of uh, mixed into it. And I'm just going through and I'm doing that to each of the carrots, really paying attention to my reference photo and how much shadow I want to apply to each of these. Uh, some of them have darker shadows than others, so I really just kind of want to pay attention to that. And one thing that's kind of important to to know is that the outer carrots, which are the ones that I end up doing first, really kind of look dark and unnatural uh, compared to the center one. They don't really look like how you would see carrots if you were to just kind of pick one up and see it in good light, but in the reference photo, these are dark, so they're going to have a lot more shadow, a lot more depth, and they are going to look a little unnatural on their own, um, and that's okay. That's not something to really worry about uh, if you are trying to maybe follow this or recreate it, or if you're just taking these steps and you are painting uh, your own. Just making sure that you are trying to follow the colors of your reference photo the best that you can and not really pay attention to something looking quite unnatural right away. And now you can see I'm finally on this top carrot and I'm leaving a lot more yellow in there, whereas the bottom one is really quite dark um, and the other ones have some highlights left in there. There's really a lot of yellow left in it. And now I'm taking a little bit of my sepia, and I am having a bit of a mix in this. I did add some maroon perylene and some azo orange to this, just to make it so that it wasn't that really kind of dark. I wouldn't say unnatural because they're carrots, so they can have kind of this dirt kind of quality to them, but I wanted it to feel uh, warmer and, I don't know, just having the, the sepia alone felt a little bit too dark and a little bit too unnatural, and I wanted this to have a warmer look. So what I'm doing is I am just going in and I'm adding those really pronounced uh, ridges where kind of the dirt will get stuck into these little areas of the carrot. And now I'm going through and I'm adding mostly my maroon perylene, but it is kind of mixed with a little bit of orange as needed. And I am paying more attention to kind of the segmented 
look of the carrot. I'm going in paying close attention to my drawing that I did. I did my drawing with the Prismacolor Coal Erase pencils and I'm just making sure to follow that line really carefully to kind of keep the integrity of that drawing and I'm kind of doing these light washes around the edge and then I'm flicking inward uh, to create a lot of texture. This kind of helps to accentuate the, the shadows and the roundness of the carrots and also kind of allude to the fact that there is a lot of texture in these as well. Uh, this may not be the most uh, photo realistic painting that I've done. It does have a little bit of an impressionistic look but it still overall ends up looking pretty realistic in the end. And as I'm kind of going through and adding more colors to some of the other carrots in the, the form of the shadows with the sepia and the maroon perylene, I'm just kind of going Going back and darkening areas as needed. As I said, I do work on the outer carrots first, so you'll notice that as I'm darkening them, as I'm adding a little bit of my mixture, and they make it look a little bit unnatural, but again, it's the darker part of the of the carrot, the shadowed area of it. And I'm just repeating this process on each one. I'm paying attention to my reference photo. I'm paying attention to how dark the shadows are. I'm paying attention to how the carrots kind of overlap each other, the shadows that they cast on one another, the shadows that are just cast from being underneath or away from the light source uh, that is available in the photo. And I'm just trying to accentuate all of these so that in the end it looks really realistic even though it may look a little unnatural in these kind of beginning stages. And now I'm just kind of going through and I'm basically doing those same steps over again with all of the carrots. So I really won't continue to narrate all of this. I'll probably just add some music over it. But you can see that it's just me continuing to add more color and flick it inward, being really careful to maintain that highlighted area in the center of the carrots, and again, pay attention to the shadows. This is a tedious process, I will say that, but it's well worth it if you are trying to go for a more realistic look within your painting. It's all in the details that you add to your painting, and it's really what makes it come to life in the end. I know, especially when you're in a hurry, I have done this before and I've seen other people do it, where you see the image that you want to make and it's so easy to kind of look at that end game and where you want to end up and sometimes overlook all of the little steps, all of the little details that you end up needing uh, to get there. So just by kind of being patient and coming back to it, this painting I worked on, I believe it was around three hours or so over the course of uh, four days just because of my office being completely destroyed with this whole desk fiasco. But yeah, just taking the time and coming back to it. With stuff like this, you do want to make sure that in between each layer, you are allowing your paper to dry because you you want to be able to maintain that kind of look to it. Unless you're going for something that is perhaps a bit more blended, maybe perhaps a touch more on that kind of realistic side and you're not seeing all of those little lines and ridges, perhaps you'll want to keep your paper a little bit more wet. But in this painting and in this tutorial, I do try to make sure that I'm bouncing around from area to area and I'm allowing all of those sections to dry properly before coming back to them to avoid that spreading of color, that bleeding out, and the, the colors just kind of mingling where I don't want them to. And don't mind this battery that I have. As I was painting the 
the ends of the paper tended to kind of warp upwards and it was the opposite corners. So I had a hard time kind of keeping that down on each side and I was just kind of using that to weight the paper down when I needed it. Also here you can see where I have that new desk. I ordered it in white and fun fact, I am two and a half desks into getting the desk that I ordered. <laughs> so it's been, it's been a week and my desk has been through a lot, but at least I've gotten rid of the one that had that split down the center. Uh, that was getting a little problematic <laughs> in my workflow. So it's nice to have a new desk and I finally have the correct top today. So I look forward to having that all set up in the future videos. seen me waiting and pausing since we are pretty far into this I really am just kind of checking and adjusting my colors at this point I feel like I've done a pretty good job at having the shadows I will go back in and kind of fix those as I go but for now I'm going into the tops of the carrots and most of this I used the sap green and a little bit of the permanent green light and to kind of brighten up some of those areas because it looked too kind of neon too artificial I did end up adding some of the azo yellow and that really kind of toned it down made it more earthy and more realistic overall when I added in all of these colors like the the permanent green light to the sap green and the yellow I did do that wet on wet to allow it to really kind of flow into those areas and once I tried to add the the details to it I did that when the paper was dry since these are again pretty rounded segments I wanted them to maintain that harsh look to one side, that kind of shadowed area. And also with how the, the tops are, you can see that they, they kind of grow in different directions. There's a bit of a, a dimension to it. So being able to show the shadows where I wanted them to in such a tiny area, especially some of these were quite small, quite intricate. Um, I did want to make sure that I wasn't going to have all of that kind of bleeding into each other and some areas required just a little bit more depth to them I felt like the greens were kind of flat so I added the tiniest amount of the maroon perline to the green to really enhance those greens to really bring them out I didn't want them to cross over into brown uh, because I didn't want them to look you know old or anything I just kind of wanted to make it a richer more earthier green enough so that you can can see that the color has changed but not enough to know that there's red in there. And here I am just kind of going through and enhancing those shadows a little bit. I did use a little bit of sepia in this part, mostly mixed in with the maroon perline and the azo orange, but really kind of emphasizing where that top carrot is shadowing the carrots underneath it. And then going through and accentuating the the texture of the carrot. I didn't want to add just this kind of blanket wash to it, this kind of harsh look to it because that would have been really unnatural. So still adding that shadow and then kind of flicking it outward like I did for the rest of the carrot to really kind of help enhance all of that. And I'm just kind of going through and double checking all of that. Now you can see me working on the outer right carrot doing the same thing, adding that shadow. Since this was on the lit side of the of the top carrot, the shadow isn't going to be as great, but again, since these are rounded objects, it still does cast a shadow in there. 
And finally, now that I'm happy with the piece, I'm going in with my Payne's Gray. I'm using a very, very light wash in the beginning. I didn't want this to be a really stark shadow. I wanted it to be kind of soft since I really did like the look of this piece as it was. I felt like it didn't really need to have this harsh shadow. Plus, in all honesty, I am just a chicken when it comes to adding the shadow. It's my least favorite part. However, I do believe that it adds the most realism to a piece. So I'm making sure to go in and shadow each of those pieces. And if you can see up in the corner, I actually moved my, I believe it was a tube of paint, but it was just something to allow me to help visualize where the light source was coming from. This is a trick that I use all the time. Uh, sometimes it just helps me kind of keep my, my shadow straight, especially when I've used a reference photo that I've strayed from a little bit. Just helping me kind of keep that perspective straight is really helpful. So if you need to use a trick like that, feel free. Uh, it's been a huge help to me. And then I'm just kind of going in and slightly darkening up that shadow a little bit. Uh, again, it's kind of hard to see. It's probably the lighting in here, but you'll be able to really kind of see it in the sweeping shot of this painting. You could probably see it in the beginning of the video, and I will show it again at the end once I'm done. But just kind of going through and, and paying close attention. Again, since these are rounded, I'm adding just a tiny bit of shadow to the outer right carrot because that would cast a small shadow underneath it. But for the most part, I'm staying really specific on the left side, making sure to add that and kind of blend it out and give it a watercolor-esque quality to it because I think that's the prettiest way to add shadows. Again, if you want to be more realistic or maybe even more impressionistic in how you shadow your paintings, then feel free. And I am paying special attention to how I shadow the greens. Hope you all enjoyed this video. I had a lot of fun painting it and sharing it with you guys today. And if you decide to paint it, please tag me on social media. I would love to see it. That's all for today, and I will talk to you next time. Bye!